One of the most important aspects of working in post-production is, for me, is understanding what we've got and then what we have to achieve. Now, what we've got includes what your source materials are, who your clients are, what their expectations are. They may be very new to the business, making a film a year at best. They may be very experienced. What you need to end up with could be anything from your delivery formats, which you have to refer to the delivery specs. It might be for features, we know what they are. For broadcast, they're getting better. Uh, for DVD, for European, for foreign release, all those things need to be taken into consideration. And if you don't think about the end product before you start, inevitably you're going to have problems. Uh, and by problems, I mean budgetary problems. Because for the the bad news is, let's just be honest, that a lot of this is being drawn, driven by the bottom line, and that's why we need to be very, very efficient. So workflow-wise, we usually get materials in as an OMF. We edit them almost exclusively in Pro Tools. We expect certain materials from our clients, like the OMFs have to be, are probably prepared with the best quality we can get. But we also get, obviously, a lot of music tracks from people, and they may be stems, they may be 5.1, and their expectations for what we can do with them vary greatly. We may have a music person working in 96K, expecting to have their music sound terrific at 24-bit or 20-bit at best on standard television. And I don't I hate to be the bad, bearer of bad news to them, but they don't sound the same. Uh, but we use... Uh, various tools to, to achieve that. I think one of the ways that we integrated the, well, we'll back up a little bit. <clears throat> so we, we get the materials in, we edit them. Inevitably, we integrate them all into one or two systems. In this room, we'll usually run a single man. I have uh, the latest version of Pro Tools. We need to go into that, but just loaded with plugins, loaded with plugins. Uh, many of them for dynamic range control, sibilance control, and, um, uh, but also for uh, for uh, for reverbs um, in this session. This is a Metropolitan Opera session, and uh, and sure enough, if we punch up here, we've got our uh, uh, here's a preset taken directly from uh, from our friend the Six Thousand, which we're running for uh, custom made for reverbs. As I said earlier, uh, Metropolitan Opera does their post production here. We mirror all the work that they do. Uh, if they made a modification to reverbs, they let us know what that is, and I dial it into to here for specific purposes. We also use the unwraps for doing um, PBS provides us with certain packaging that's in stereo, of course, but their delivery demand is 5.1. Got to make that somehow. Again, we use uh, unwraps that were taken directly from from the 6,000. Here's a uh, <clears throat> Here's the one I happen to use for, for the um, for the PBS stuff. And then in the PBS spec, it stipulates that there be no low frequency material in 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 any of the dialogue. Well, some of their their wraparound material contains dialogue. Here's another way that we've um, imported or or moved from the 6000 platform over to the Pro Tools uh, and using a plugin of an unwrap. And I guess I, <laughs> I take a lot of this stuff for granted because I get to work with every. I live in this room. I'm in this room 40, 60 hours a week. And I'll have people walk in this room and say, oh, my God, you got it all here. And I literally do. I have three setups for monitoring. Uh, actually, four, if you want to call the mono or a tone a monitor. But I have three different ways of listening to 5.1. I have two sets of surround. I have two ways of managing. I can use base management or without. I have VU meters. I have radar. I have the, the um, jellyfish. And, of course, I have my ears. But I have, at this sweet spot here, everything you could imagine to control my audio environment. And... Uh, I guess what, the people say, well, if you want it done your way, you should own the place. 
well, that's what I did 25 years ago. We built this place, and being, uh, you know, I've got five Emmy Awards and multiple CAS Awards, and I'm fortunate I've been involved with, with features that have won uh, awards and, and Grammys that have, you know, uh, projects that have won Grammys. And uh, I'd like to think if, if it's any good, we probably have it in this room or we had it in this room until something else better came along. And one of the only products that's still here is, is this puppy here. Um, unfortunately, I can't play you a lot of the audio that I have because it's copywritten and some of it hasn't been on the air yet. But you can see that you get a, let me just reset this, where the radar, for instance, you get a visual display and a very comprehensive visual display of what you're hearing. Because, again, the, your ears and your eyes can only be focused on, your, especially your eyes, can only be focused on so many things. And inevitably, we want to make sure that our ears are listening to everything. And, and uh, products like this, radar in particular, really gives you a long term, up to, up to over an, an hour, of, of a, of a uh, map let's say, of what you've heard. Hours. Up to, I'm sorry, yeah, up to 20, Steve says, up to 20 hours. You can down from, from a minute up to 24 hours of a, really a, a, a map of where you've been and, and what's, what issues you may have heard, and this will confirm them or sort of deny them, but at least gives you a, sort of a, a visual checkup um, and a, um, just another way of seeing things, uh, displaying things. Uh, as we know, the, the ear is the most complex of your senses. You can really fool your eyes in a lot of ways, but your ears, you know, take some, take some, very crafty, some real craftiness to, uh, to trick them. And that's what this is all about, quite frankly, uh, from a mixer standpoint, is making people think they're hearing what we want them to hear, and then going over to the senses. Um, I, and I do want to say a little bit more about you know, this is a great technology. This this technology works. This is this has come out of some very um, some technologies had a very difficult little launching pad, the LM100 and the and the uh, dial norm. That whole thing's been very controversial. People don't know how to deal with it. And what this doesn't have here is there's no meter setting for artistic. There's no set, oh, there, where's the feel? No, there's no, those don't, those don't work on here. They don't work on any of these things. That's, that's where this comes in, that's where this comes in, and that integrates into your heart and your experience and your mind. And, but these tools help you to take that and turn it into an expression. Uh, I've often heard that anybody can play the notes on a page, on a piano. Well, some people sound like typing. And some people sound like angels. And that's the difference is, you know, using these tools to sound like angels and really to make things work for you. Um, <clears throat> in our workflow, inevitably, what we, we were, that's what we really started talking about was, and I'll sort of jump to the end. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of things on television, even in the workspace, out of sync. It's getting better, but it's not perfect. We all thought when we had this digital transition, that was the time that we were going to put this all together. We're going to have terrific sounding audio, great dynamic range. This whole loudness thing wouldn't be a problem, and everything would be compatible, and it would be all be in sync. Wrong, 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 especially the sync issue. Um, even in the studio, we have a lag of picture. Picture takes a long time to get from point A to point B and to be translated, let's say. Uh, I use the 6000 and set up the, the delays so that depending on what picture we're looking at and what the, what the, what the, uh, you know, the, the signal flow is to, uh, to um, make up for my lag in my picture. And it's, it's the highest quality delays I've ever heard. So there's no issue about, oh boy, I don't want to play through this box because uh, it's not going to sound like what we did. Um, somebody will know the difference further from the truth.